we're recording. Oh, I am recording, yes. Okay, great. So welcome to the September 15th um, Council Rules Select Committee. Uh, I think we, should we do roll call? Sure. Um, okay, Councilor Mayori. Here. Member Simon. Here. Member Baskin. Here. Councilor Dwight. Here. And I'm sorry, Councillor Foster. Here. And I've just, there was only one other person in the waiting room who I've just admitted. Right. Go back to the agenda. Okay, so I just lost the agenda. <laughs> um, is there a motion? Let's see, do we have any public comment while I wait? No public. I see Councilor no Jarrett. public comment. And any, any, this is time right. for any public comments? Um, okay. Councilor Mayor. Council Council no. Oh. Councilor Jarrett has his hand up. Oh, Councilor Jarrett. Thank you. Um, I also, I'm, I'm, one minute, Councilor Jarrett. I just want to say that my internet. Excuse me? Shoot. Go ahead. I was just going to say I'm having unusually bad internet connection. So I just want Vice Chair Simon to be ready to, because uh, I it's been unusually bad today. So uh, forgive me if there's a disjointedness. Yes, Councilor Jarrett, please give your comments. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you all for, for doing this work. Um, it's been great to watch. And um, I wanted to give uh, some comments first on the previous topics. Um, so um, you, a few meetings ago, you um, made some decisions around public comment. Um, and I think that one hour is, is actually too short. Too short. Um, it's sufficient much of the time, but because it is difficult to extend without opening up to a complaint about bias, uh, I believe an hour and a half would be better. Um, limiting to two minutes does allow for more people. But when there is a topic of great interest, I think that hour would be used up quickly. Um, and then the other previous topic, remote participation. Um, I agree that allowing the public to participate remotely uh, is an important move to enable more accessibility. Even if COVID is not as big a concern in the future, it'll just uh, allow so many more people to, to participate and having our the, the limit on the time will will help um, with that, that problem we've had where it uses up hours and hours. And thank you for adding family illness and fam family caretaking to the list of reasons that a counselor uh, may participate remotely. Uh, so topics on the agenda, uh, finance committee. So I do see little use uh, right now of having the committee in the meeting. And it, as it is now, we all participate and then usually have um, little discussion on first on first reading because we've already done that discussion. Um, I do, so I like the idea of the finance committee meeting as needed, but it does bring up the question of how we, we would decide what to refer, um, you know, non-time sensitive items, but with two readings already, the timeline is long and the mayor usually doesn't have that lead time on a lot of those items. Um, and we do have a standing finance committee time, I think on the fourth Tuesday, but I in this term, I don't know that that's met even once. Um, so that almost always gets canceled. So I, I don't, I'm curious, I'll be interested to hear your discussion uh, on those issues. Um, for the community resources committee, um, I'm a member and it hasn't met that often this term, but there have been really important discussions on uh, zoning issues, on the plastics ordinance, among others. And I think that it has been an important place uh, to create that space for people to have the discussion with the public and to have the time for in-depth presentations because we also had some great presentations um, <clears throat> uh, last year. So um, I haven't attended many of the city services meetings but the, its jurisdiction is quite different and it, it's often very busy with appointments. So to me, it makes sense to continue with it as a separate uh, committee. Um, finally, the, the order of business. Um, I would note that the updates from the council president and committee chairs in the rules is not actually in the right place. Um, right now, we, we always do that after public hearings. Um, 
so that that's maybe just a housekeeping item. Uh, public hearings being first would certainly be more convenient for to those who are there for them. Um, the only complicating thing I can think about with that is that public comment would then be within the meeting, uh, which there was some question about whether that that changed uh, the issues. So uh, those are my comments so far, and I uh, look forward to your discussion. Um, I wasn't planning on participating during the meeting um, after reading, you know, the city solicitor's opinion and others uh, in your minutes. Um, but I, I suppose that that participation would be permitted as much as any member of the public. So perhaps that is the threshold. It, you know, if you're willing to have a dialogue with a member of the public on an issue, then you could be willing to have a dialogue um, with a counselor, given that the meetings are cross-posted. Um, so uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Jarrett. Councillor Nash. Thank you, Councillor Maori. Um, so, um, yeah, so I, I, I arrived at the meeting expecting that I could be uh, included in some of the dialogue. And I'm, I'm sensing that that has not been clarified. So I think I'm going to uh, uh, just kind of uh, speak to some of the items on the agenda now during public comment and, and follow Councillor Jarrett's lead. I think that's a safe way to go. And um, so anyway, let me pull that agenda up. Um, well, you know, so overall, the, a, a, a concept that I, I think that um, we really need to adhere to is this idea that our, uh, that our committees are the, they're, they're the place where the public can interact with us during our discussions of the topic. Committees are a great place to get information uh, from uh, experts, whether they be with the city or out in the community. And it's also a great place for people to come in and really engage and discuss the legislation that's being proposed. The, um, I, you know, I've always told people that if you really want to be part of, you know, the city process, you know, the, the legislative process, go to the committee meetings, be involved with any of the, the city committees through appointment, um, attend those meetings as well. The legislation goes all over the place. And that, um, that I, I think that, um, you know, anytime that we can um, send any of our work out to committee, just it, just it allows people the chance to engage with us with the legislative process. Um, I, once we get to a council meeting, it, that's, you know, that's where we end up where, you know, the, the last bite for the public at the Apple is, is through as public comment. And then it's us all in, you know, engaging in deliberations and, you know, in dialogue with um, whatever city department head is proposing something. So that I, I think just as an overall, um, uh, something that we, we, we really need to double down on. I think sending stuff out to committees is, is super important. Um, that, um, all right, let me see what else we have on here. Uh, there's the, you know, one of these days I'm gonna get multiple screens. So I, <laughs> um, all right, back to the agenda. Yeah, uh, so, Finance Committee, I, I think this is really kind of problematic that um, that the idea that we have a committee meeting that doesn't meet that goal of where the public can interact with whatever it is that we're about to vote on. Um, and that and oftentimes it, it's, you know, what, you know, finance is it, it's possibly the most. I mean, yes, there's there's some really big stuff that we work on. But the nuts and bolts really have to do with, with those finance decisions because they match up with the budget and with our city plans. And um, so that the idea that we would have a meeting talking about money that the public can't engage with, um, I, I think we need to figure out how to do that. Um, a thought I had is that... Um, 
and this would be difficult for the finance committee, is the idea of finance meeting uh, the Wednesday before a council meeting. That um, that the that uh, often because financial orders tend to they're often the ones that need, need to move quickly. Uh, that uh, when it comes to broader policy stuff, you know, we we can we. We have the time to mess around with those things, but there's there tends to be a timeline with with financial orders. Um, so the idea would be possibly finance holds a meeting on uh, Wednesday before the the council meeting uh, and and allows time for public to have input. The other idea would be that we just have a finance committee meeting prior to. The, the council meeting um, that with the idea that the committee meeting, um, uh, it can include all of the counselors or whatever, but that it, it, it allows the public an opportunity to ask questions about why we're moving, you know, you know, $2,000 from column A to the column B, uh, which sometimes is what we're, which oftentimes is what we're doing. But I, I think that, um, you know, allowing the public to have a chance to, uh, you know, ask questions about that is 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 really important. Um, let me get all right. Um, eliminating community resources or combining city services. Um, so I I current I like the current breakdown between uh, community resources and city services. Um, uh, there may be some sharing of responsibilities there. Um, city services does a lot of work on appointments. And um, so there's a lot of outreach and um, that um, they are to be applauded for that. And also, but also that uh, I think there's times where um, there's, uh, there is, I think there's greater dialogue with city departments that could go on with city services. And I'm not saying this in the way of like, well, you know, we, we should have, you know, Donna Lascalia, director of DPW, come in and speak to us. It's to, if there's a particular initiative that's going on within the city, that having uh, department heads come and update the city services committee, I, I think that's an appropriate place to have that discussion especially when it's related to some sort of evolving, you know, emerging policy, I, I think that would be really helpful. Um, community resources, I mean, as the chair, I, I am pretty comfortable with its purview. Um, I, I think um, that it, um, um, I think we, we, that it's largely, um, uh, Met the goals that um, it's it's been set up for. Um, possibly, you know, maybe maybe over the last two years we we could have done a little more engagement. But um, but one of the things I've tried to do with community resources is anticipating. Uh, for example, uh, last year there was there was a lot of focus during the winter of, about what were the services that were being provided to to uh, folks who uh, were houseless and, um, and, and hungry. And so that was a theme of one of our community resources meeting to really, you know, hey, you could hear it in public comment. People are saying, what are you doing? And um, that we um, uh, put, pulled together that meeting to kind of highlight, well, these are the things that the city is doing. And here are some of the things that we need to improve on, you know, having Pam Schwartz there to, uh, speak to that as well. Um, so, um, since I wasn't expecting all of this, you know, so I, I think those were my th thoughts um, with the with the big theme. Um, the more stuff we send to committee, the better, because that's where we can engage with the public. I, I think it's really important to do that. Um, it, it, People get better information. They don't feel as under the gun. And um, so those are my thoughts. So thank you. And, and I'll stick around to hear what you guys are gonna say. Thank you, Councillor Nash. Uh, 
I'm not thank you for letting me go more than three minutes. <laughs> I, yes, <laughs> you're welcome. Luckily, I wasn't looking, glancing at my, uh, my, my phone. But um, so I don't see any more public comment. So I'm going to close public comment, but I am reserving the right, the right to recognize um, members of the public, including counselors throughout the meeting. And I'm going to seek to have a protocol and clarification made about that after this meeting. But since we have a culture and, a, and an expectation of that, I reserve the right to recognize um, anyone else in the meeting who, um, who shows. It's part of the public or or counselor. Okay, so on to the agenda. Let's see. Um, approval of the minutes of August twenty third, twenty twenty one. Move approval, please. Second. Roll call. Oh, you're muted, Laura. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. So I, I only see one housekeeping issue with the minutes, which is that Councillor Foster is not listed in the uh, initial um, identification of, I believe, on the, on the, on the committee. Am okay. I right about that? Yeah. That's the only thing I wanted I'll to add. Uh, add yeah. Councilor Dwight. Point of, point of order, just a point of order is that actually you should have mentioned that before we voted on the minutes, but yeah, it's fine. Right. It, it doesn't, it's just a error. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I just happened to see it, but you're, you are correct. So, yeah, a Scrivener's error. Um, and Council of the Barge is listed. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. Somehow I didn't, I didn't catch that one. Thank you, Member Baskin. Okay. That back. Okay, so moving on, um, we have topics related to section two point. Am I looking at the? Oh, excuse me. <laughs> looking at the old agenda. I am having issues with my computer. Uh, Laura, would you announce what was the next item on the agenda, which I'm I... sure. Um, For some reason I'm having trouble opening my um, okay. goal. It is possible restructuring, am I muted? Possible restructuring of council committees, ideas on the table. And then there's four, do you want me to? Um, yes. Having the Okay, having the full council assume the responsibilities of the finance committee, effectively eliminating the finance committee as a standing committee. I don't know if we want to do these one at a time or just have the all listed. Uh, um, I, I would, yeah, now I have the agenda in front of me. Thank you, Laura. Uh, we could start one at a time. And so ideas on the table. So the first one would be having the full council assume responsibilities of the finance committee, effectively eliminating the finance committee as a standing committee. Uh, Councilor Dwight? Oh. Uh, if I could recommend that we consult with the mayor, because actually the issue of referral is kind of germane to this whole discussion. If, if it's possible, in any way possible, to get the items addressed in finance sooner, um, and we can conv convene a special meeting of finance, or even if we eliminate finance, the fact is, you know, one of the biggest sticking points that's been alluded to here earlier and that I mentioned last time was that it's the only series of items that are not referred that the council refers out. It's not, they're not introduced to what is Councilor Nash had mentioned, what we traditionally do to see items, the ordinances, the resolutions and everything else They come before us and then we choose to refer them out. We don't have that flexibility because of the timelines and the time structures in particular. And it's worth having a conversation with the mayor to find out what limitations are there. We know there are clocks, but we don't know precisely what those are. And if the mayor could provide us some information, so the next mayor uh, would it, it be uh, prepared to assume, if possible, 
earlier introduction of the financial order so that they can give the latitude and time to be addressed by a standalone committee or the council in, in the main so that it doesn't it isn't all processed on the same day and in the same meeting which is the thrust of the problem and, and councilor nash is absolutely right and and i believe it was ezekiel who first mentioned this uh, uh to the committee was that here we have these rather critical features, these critical elements of what we do, and they're introduced, they're discussed, and they're voted on with no further vetting, no deeper probing other than the questions that we ask in the, in the committee, and no participation by the public. And so it would be helpful if we knew what the timelines are, the time structures, and the limitations, and maybe there's some room in there. Maybe there's some room in there that allows for those financial orders to appear before us sooner so that we can actually refer them out. Um, part of the referral process, of course, as we all know, you refer something out and it's about a month and a half to two months before you see it again, come back to the council floor. I believe that's not gonna be doable under uh, with financial orders, but it remains to be seen. I don't know. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna, um... I saw Councilor Foster and Member Baskin. I just want a point of clarification. Um, I, I believe you all um, have seen the um, email shared by Solicitor Seawald on this subject. Okay, because that's germane to this conversation. And I just wanted to make sure because it was sent kind of on the late side, I think, I believe today. Okay, so Councilor Foster. Thank you. Um, as we're listening, I think Councilor Nash's point about an opportunity for the public to engage, you know, on some of the financial orders it is an important one. And I really see that at the same time, you know, the, the work of the council, it's one of the most important or perhaps the most important function of the council um, is, is um, looking through the financial orders. And so it had me wondering, and I'm gonna speak off the cuff a little bit, um, if there's a way that we can combine some of the other committees, not all the time, and not, not all of the financial orders necessarily need a lengthy vetting process, um, but there are some that there is more interest from the public in, or that seems to need more vetting than others. So moving you know, $2,000 from column A to column B is one that as a as a council, and, and let me back up for a second. The way we've been functioning as a council basically is that the entire council is the finance committee. Um, and, and that is, is a point of strength, I believe, in how we handle our financial matters. And one that, that um, I would argue is, is important to keep. Um, but thinking about that, um, you know, perhaps there could be some flexibility in how topics are introduced or how we as a council handle them. Um, the, the example that's coming to mind was the financial order regarding the animal control facility. Um, and that was a two financial order topic that ended up generating significant community discussion. That perhaps is a financial order, depending on timelines and things like that, that could have been referred to a standing committee we already have. That could have gone to the community resources committee um, or there could be an ad hoc committee set up for a quick referral if there's something that the council feels like we need more information before voting on. So I think there are ways that we could handle um, those, those topics. Um, they're not that frequent, um, but when they come up, I, I do believe we can handle them. Um, but I think as far as having a finance committee, I guess looking down the road, you know, and, and the president of the city council has a significant amount of power. Um, and that's just the way it is. Um, and this president of the city council is the one who's naming our committees. And so if we're talking about the finance committee being you know, the most important council committee, there, there's, there's a, you know, maybe this is something we wanna look at in rules, but how committees are appointed, there could be an opportunity for councilors to lose quite a bit of the, um, power that we have and the involvement that we have that I actually think is incredibly important. And I know I brought this up at our last meeting, um, but we've been functioning basically without a council finance committee. Um, I know that there is one that, that matters could be referred to, but the entire council, council has been functioning as the finance committee. And those 
those financial orders, those transactions, those votes that we take are ones that residents follow up with me about and that, you know, I'm having those conversations. And, um, you know, I've been looking at, at other cities and how are they structuring their committees, but then sort of thought about, well, this is how we've been functioning in Northampton. It's, it, it's a way that I would argue, especially as a newer counselor, is really working um, as far as involving the whole council and the different angles on involving the financial orders. I think the idea of having a separate committee meeting within the city council meeting, that, that has always felt to me uh, to be a little bit silly um, as the whole council has participated. Um, so, um, you know, I, I would be strongly in favor of eliminating the finance committee as we're looking at our finance structures and having it be a council committee. And I'll probably make a motion to that effect in a little bit, but I, I know that member Baskin and member Simon, you had your hands up and um, I'd love to see where this conversation continues. Thank you. Um, member Baskin. Yeah, I think the, I, I don't, I can see the value of having the, the whole council involved in the work that is sort of ostensibly the finance committee. And I agree that it finance committee has not been functioning as a separate committee currently. Um, I do think the point of bringing in engagement from the public is really significant. And I, I stand by sort of the, the point that I made that, that Councillor Dwight and Councillor Nash were both talking about that I don't think financial orders should be introduced and deliberated and voted on in the same day. Like that to me feels like there's no opportunity for the public to have genuine engagement with the financial orders, which are, are the, such the core work. So I, if, if the finance committee is still to be a committee of the whole, I think it, it's, I feel like it still needs to meet on a different day. And that would potentially mean like double the meetings for the whole council if it were to be the full council having essentially like a special meeting on the Wednesday and then meeting on the Thursday. So that's a lot. But at the same time, even that and giving members of the public a chance to engage with it, but also if it's not a committee, would members of the public be allowed to engage more in the way that they would if it was a true committee like that? I think it's important that the, the entirety of the council is able to participate. But I also think the council has their bite of the apple in the meeting, like even if we say we were to follow a structure where there was an actual separate finance committee with, you know, three counselors on it or four counselors on it, um, four, I guess, in the current practice. Um, and that group met on Wednesdays, members of the public could engage in that discussion with, you know, the mayor or whoever from, from the executive was there, um, along with those members of the, of the council there was a discussion. And then the next day at the council meeting, there would still be of a deliberation and vote of the full council. So there would still be the chance for members of the whole council to ask their questions, as opposed to the current model where there's no mechanism for members of the public to ask their questions about financial orders. Like as a member of the public, I have no access to, to do that. And I think that that I do think that's a problem that there's no there's no way for members of the public to be involved in that discussion in the way that it would function in another committee. Um, and that I think the time clock gets used to, like we were, were rushed, things get rushed um, in a way that like other legislation, there's this long deliberative process and the, by the nature of the clock, there can't be for financial orders. But I still think finding a way for the public to be more engaged is important. Um, Vice, Vice Chair Simon. Sorry. Uh, let me start by saying that in my years on a legislative body, I've grown to become very skeptical when an executive says things need to happen right now. Um, and I've been in situations where uh, we felt we had no choice but to proceed, but it clearly was not the right way to do things. So I'm wary of, I'm wary of such claims. Um, but let me also add that I, as I read the rules, I think that things are operating in a more complicated fashion than the current rules uh, require. 
um, so as I'm listening to this, you know, the, the finance committee has written jurisdiction and a referral to the finance committee by my reading of the rules is not required for the finance committee to oversee its area of jurisdiction. So from my perspective, if, if there's a need, let's say to transfer at the end of the fiscal year to transfer money from this account to this account, um, a finance committee can meet, can review that can make a decision. I would even propose that matters like that get put into a consent agenda for quick resolution because they're pro forma house cleaning. Um, that'll, that'll clear up some time um, under the rules of consent. Any member's allowed to pull it out if there's some problem with the decision to be made. But I don't understand why there couldn't be a finance committee a week, a week before the council meeting to review those things that have that deadline. Uh, the, the, the committee makes a decision. It goes on the council agenda one way or another, as there is a, a line item or an, as part of a consent agenda, and you're done with it. Um, the council makes its decision. Um, so I, I think there's a lot, I frankly think there's more flexibility under the rules as they're written now than the council has been willing to use to, to make things maybe move a little bit more quickly than the culture has required, okay? Because there's a difference between the way, the habit of decision-making and what the rules say you can and can't do. And the rules are open on this, right? The, the, the chair of the finance committee can call a meeting. Um, I assume there should be some discussion between the executive and the finance committee about the items that have to be moved. Finance Committee has its meeting. I agree with Councillor Nash completely in his view of what the committees are and what they ought to do. I think I may have commented on this previously that that's really an area for a subset of councillors to become subject matter experts, that that's, that's their area that they're gonna focus on. And the, the committee members can then lead discussion on the, the agenda items, they should be able to, when it comes up to the full committee. Um, so on the topic of whether there should be a finance committee, I think there should be, because I think there should be subcommittees to, to separate the wheat from the chaff for the council to do the prep work, the digging, the questioning, to have a little bit more interaction in a more informal setting, and then make decisions to pass stuff up to the council for final decision. I think I will check. Oh, um, Member Baskin, you, you and then I'm going to add some You can thoughts. go first. I already yeah, talked. Sure. Oh, well, um, I try to I try to be the, the caboose on the conversation. But um, I, I would say that I've given this some thought and it was very illuminating that um, Solicitor Seawald said that we are not required to have a, a finance committee as a city. And um, that kind of changes my thinking on it um, a little bit from last time. I, what I, I, I hear what um, Vice Chair Simon is saying, and I think that's a template that works for some cities. I think we really need to look at Northampton. And what I see is, um, you know, it's interesting because I know Council Dwight and uh, um, President Shara commented on how people didn't used to be, you know, interested in the budget and it was kind of the crickets at budget time. And that's changed. And, and I don't think we're actually going to go back anytime soon is my guess, because um, first of all, with hybrid model and engagement, and I, I just think that um, our, that people are going to continue to be engaged. And with that engagement um, comes, you know, some accountability, frankly. Um, but my, count, my constituents expect me to be, um, you know, really on the ball and, and you know, all the details about that some, you know, financial orders. And we, we are going to be held accountable whether we're on that committee or not. You know, I feel like we're gonna fall on our swords if we, if we miss something. So I think the effect of that is, and we also, I think we just have very engaged counselors. And from what I see in the field coming, uh, that's not gonna change. And so the, the effect of that is that we are all going to want to participate in that. And it will make, um, if, you have, it, you know, if you have a five o'clock or six o'clock meeting before a council meeting, it's gonna it's, it's going be really a lot for, 
uh, counselors to do their due, what they feel is their due diligence on this. So I, uh, I, I, my, I'm of the opinion that we should eliminate the financial committee and have um, have have counsel full counsel uh, review financial orders. I, I also think it's tough, you know, it's, we talked about this last time to really decide. I know it's, sometimes it seems very pro forma. I think it's a tough call sometimes to know what's gonna be, um, you know, kind of subs, you know, kind of be more significant to the public. And um, and I'm thinking a little member Baskin about your idea, you know, if, if you eliminated the financial committee and, and, and then, but then did meet another day as, you know, as full counsel, I, I guess we'd have, I'd have to know more about what that could look like. Does that mean another hour or hour and a half of public comment, you know, general public comment? I just, that's not a new in, an interesting idea. And I don't know, uh, you know, the parameters around full council meetings that aren't, aren't uh, you know, the, the, the consent agenda. So those are my thoughts. Um, so I, yeah, I feel kind of strongly that, that it's the, the, the you know, that we really look at how we are operating right now and recognize um, our, our city and our culture here. Uh, so, and, and I would support eliminating the financial committee. Yes, member Baskin and then um, Councilor Joy. I do think a, a couple of thoughts. One, I just wanna underline um, Vice Chair Simon's point that anything in the, the consent agenda can be taken out by any counselor. So even if the financial committee decided, if it was separate, decided something should go in there, anybody could take it out. And often they're taken out for very small reasons. So I it thinks already. So I do think that, that that is a good thing about the way the consent agenda operates. I think it's a very functional part of the, the meeting structure right now. Um, I guess I do just think that there should be a, a vehicle for more public participation in the finance financial orders. And that I think we should, uh, we, the executive should be able to produce financial orders before the day of, I agree with Vice Chair Simon. Like that's that sense of timeliness is manufactured, and I think that the council deserves time to deliberate, and the public deserves time to engage with financial orders. So I really want to see that made possible, even if that's just one more day. Like I think that 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 shouldn't be impossible by any measure. Um, and just one other point, sort of to to Councillor Foster's thought about the kind of the financial. The finance committee being the most important committee. I also think that speaks to what's not robust about the other committees. Like I think that there's, and this sort of comes to what we were talking about with city services last last week. And I know some of that's about section two of the charter, but the like I do think that city services is functioning as an appointments committee rather than as a city services committee. And that part of the reason that the finance committee feels like its purview is most important is because the purviews of the other committees are, I don't know, I think there's something there. I think there's something that's not not quite functioning about the committee structure overall right now. Thank you. Um, I believe it was um, Councillor Dwight and then Councillor Foster. Um, I would caution us about our presumptions about the uh, caginess of the executive sending down financial orders at the last minute. First of all, by the way, it's not the day before. Uh, the agenda has to be set by 48 hours in uh, business hours, but that's one extra day. There are things that govern the clock that are the DOR requirements, contract uh, bid requirements, bidding dates, and things like that. I don't know one way or another. It may be possible that maybe the executive has consistently played fast and loose and played it really cute by uh, holding off on financial orders and keeping the council in the dark. Maybe that's so. I think that it's incumbent upon us to ask. And that's why I'm asking that we invite the mayor to discuss what are the limitations? What are the parameters? What way can we actually see these orders farther in advance if possible? What are the, maybe there's certain types of orders that can be introduced much sooner and some that uh, are more time sensitive and or need to be more reactive in, a, in an emergency status, uh, that can be considered. But I, I'm just cautioning against the presumptions. Also to Councilor Foster's point, um, using the kennel as an example, I, I need to remind you that the financial order was just authorizing funding for um, the establishment of the kennel, which stands, that, that authorization still stands it's just that the mayor at the time of introducing that financial order also mentioned that uh, the site that he was considering 
and what it would cost. And as such, that's what prompted the, the uh, community conversation that you had to experience and that you facilitated actually in that. But the financial order in and of itself was a separate thing. It was, uh, it, it was approving funding to allow for a building of a kennel, not the kennel. So. Thank you, uh, Councillor Foster. Can you hear me okay? Okay, I lost all my Zoom control, so I was hoping I had unmuted. <laughs> um, <laughs> Councillor Joy, that, that is a good point that we were, that it was purely a financial point and I, I was a little bit grasping, but as we were talking as well, um, you know, I know one of the things further down the line on our list of topics for discussion is the idea of eliminating the second reading um, on many of our, or wherever possible. And the financial orders, it's not uncommon that we need to suspend the rules, but it's also not very common. Um, you know, and so there, there is room, I believe, for an expectation, and this does need to be confirmed with the executive branch, the financial orders could be introduced at, a, at one council meeting and then voted on at the next council meeting, which does leave that time in between for community participation and to really wrap their heads around it and for counselors to wrap their heads around um, items. So, you know, if an order is introduced, it could be introduced without an expectation of a vote that night. Um, and, and I understand many, many financial orders are relatively perfunctory and, and, and would get that vote. And I would imagine that orders with that kind of ticking clock um, would probably fall into a category of something that could be considered sooner. But most orders could be introduced and then voted on later. And then there is opportunity for counselors to talk with constituents and to get more information. And that's really the important piece as well. Um, you know, the second reading, one of the things I like about it is it does give us more time to research um, or learn more or go back and talk with constituents after a topic's been introduced at a meeting, but we don't need to vote on that first. Um, so that is a way that I think we could, could meet these sort of competing needs um, that I'm hearing um, you know, through this discussion. Uh, Councilor Dwight. That is an excellent point. What Councilor Foster just said is an excellent point. Essentially allowing for the same timeline not calling it a second reading and not call, not doing the weird funky stuff that we do. And it does, that's a two week span for uh, further addressing deeper, more probative addressing and ask, uh, access to the public in a standalone count, in a finance committee meeting if you want. Um, that, that it's introduced, the financial orders were introduced on the council floor, the council refers it uh, either to the consent agenda or to the, uh, uh, to the finance committee that presumably will be able to convene in the intervening weeks. And it functions just as any other order or um, uh, introdu introduced item on the council floor. I, I, it's so elegant and perfect. And I'm so grateful that actually Councilor Foster put that together and I'm kind of ashamed I've missed it, so. Uh, I'm just gonna chime in and just kind of name something I've, you know, uh, our uh, select committee kind of really, uh, it's a little daunting is that so much of our rec recommendations are contingent. So I thought of that, you know, when M Member Baskin brought up, um, you know, how, how getting more, uh, slowing it down and, and engaging the public process around finances. Well, that, you know, that's kind of contingent upon whether we have two readings or if we have, you know, you know this structure that uh, Karen, uh, that, um, Councilor Foster suggested. So I just wanted to name that, that it's, it, it, I think it, this is an unwieldiness of the content that we're dealing with and um, that, you know, so that, that there's a connect, there's a contingency about those things. So for example, you know, eliminating um, the finance committee, but then only having one vote, you know, is a different thing, you know, a, a, a one reading is a different thing than, um, and if we keep the two readings, and so that might change one's mind on, you know, on the first. So I just wanted to name that. Yes, anyone? Uh, I, think I, I thought I saw somebody raise their hand. Member Baskin? No. Okay, sorry. There's a disjointed. Um, member Fo uh, uh, Councilor Foster. And, and Councilor Joy, I I think we're I I could probably get behind either structure. Um, 
in my mind, this, this still includes not having a finance committee and a, a, a topic introduced to the council meeting and then considered deliberated and voted on in the next meeting. And yet, as you were talking, it makes sense because one of the things we talked about at our last meeting is just having committees meet when there's pressing issues to meet. And so if there is a finance committee that could hold meetings in the intervening weeks, if something, so if, if the topic's introduced, we as a council either refer it to the consent agenda for the next meeting or refer it to a finance committee that would hold a, a larger meeting and or opportunity for public input into that. But it, it, probably not something that would happen all that frequently. Um, and, and that's an idea that, that I could get behind as well. Councillor Dwight. This also speaks to what uh, Member Simon has brought up perfectly before, which is um, only having meetings to address items that are referred out. You don't schedule meetings to have a meeting. To have a meeting to postpone a meeting. I mean, there is a time slot that's allocated, but at the same time, it is, is more efficient and it makes, it keeps people to task. And I think, you know, well, it is, I, I'm not, I haven't been shy about that. It's my hope that we get rid of the second reading, at least formality and go to a more cleaner structure that actually conforms with with the way, uh, in this case, Robert's Rules of Order works. And that um, this actually does seem like a solution to a problem that we've been struggling with for a while. And it, it, a bit of an epiphany because it addressed, I think it ticks all the boxes that everything, everyone's brought up is concerned. Um, and in fact, I would recommend that it be that fin finance committee that makes the decisions about what goes to the consent agenda as Al suggests and what actually needs a more uh, a fuller conversation and discussion and analysis. And it also provides opportunity for the executive and the financial director to uh, attend and also provide more information subsequent to, I mean, previous to the vote by the time it comes to the council floor. It really does, it's clean, it's consistent with everything else that we're described. It uh, provides access by the public and allows uh, more expansive conversations, certainly than what we've been experiencing, which is, I think everyone's in accord there that uh, it, it, it's, it is not doing what it ought to do and we're not doing what we should do. So I, I, uh, I'm gonna actually refer, refer to this from this point on as Councilor Foster's epiphany. Mm -hmm. Any more comments? So we've ticked, um, looking at the, we've ticked, we're, we're approaching, now we have 10 minutes to seven. We, we, we have the, um, oh, I'm sorry, Member Baskin. I just wanna make sure I understand sort of what what's on the table. Um, so, cause I think, I feel like I've heard a couple different things. Um, so what I was understanding is that Currently, financial orders come to the finance committee, which just happens in the middle of the meeting um, and everybody participates. So what might instead happen now is financial orders would come to the full council at a meeting where they would be introduced and then either referred to the finance committee for further discussion or to the consent agenda of the next meeting. Um, and then if needed, the finance committee would meet in the intervening two weeks before the next meeting. But either way, every financial order in this current in this setup, there would actually be no mechanism for something to be introduced in the same meeting and voted on in that meeting. I like that. That seems good to me. Um, I, yeah, that's I like that structure. If that's what people are talking about, I just wanted to make sure it is. Thank you. That's important. Councilor Dwight. By by way of defining it clear more clearly, I'd actually like to make a motion for consideration as a recommendation. And that now contingent upon our decision relative to second reading, of course. Okay. So if we actually decide to stick with second reading, then this becomes moot. But right now that a standalone finance committee to convene separate from the council. All financial orders introduced in the first meeting, including the ones that some may consider to be the consent agenda, are referred to that committee. 
That committee then meets and uh, decides what goes on the consent agenda and, and then also decides what should have a fuller standalone conversation and also allow for the opportunity for public access and participation and also for more expanded input from the executive. And then they, that finance committee will make a recommendation uh, at a drop dead deadline of the next council meeting. Uh, again, this is all contingent on, of course, what these deadlines may be. And, and I'll get to that after the motion, but that's essentially my motion now. So there's a motion on the floor. Um, Councilor Foster. Foster. I had a point of clarification, but I will second Councilor Dwight's motion for discussion purposes. It's a second, yes. That's a really long motion. <laughs> it is a long motion. The clear, more succinct motion uh, would be uh, <sighs> that the, uh, from here on in that the finance committee will convene uh, as items are referred to it from the general council and before the next council meeting. Councilor Foster. I might wanna offer a friendly amendment. I'm not, um, yeah. but I, I'll talk out loud for a second because um, I think member Baskin and I, as, as I heard member Baskin talk, it felt like we had the same understanding. Councilor Dwight, as I hear you talk, I think there's a minor difference. Um, what I had intended was the idea that a financial order would be introduced to the full council and then the council would vote um, to refer something to the consent agenda for the next meeting or to refer something to the finance committee. So that would just remove the step of the finance committee having to convene to look at it. But if, you know, a, a, you know, a transfer, a capital transfer that's pretty perfunctory is introduced to the full council, somebody makes a motion, refer it to the consent agenda for the next meeting and we move on. Um, but then something comes up that requires more discussion then we make a motion to refer it to the finance committee and then the finance committee would meet. So it would come from council to the finance committee rather than from the finance committee to, just because I think it would reduce the number of meetings and then still meet the goal of all of the counselors being involved in the introduction of the financial orders. I take your, I take your point that if they, it was all perfunctory motions that would go to the consent agenda anyway, why have a meeting convene afterwards just to confirm that. So um, the, my only hesitation is, as others have noted, that it, there's no calling what would suddenly be, uh, what people suddenly take an interest in, that you suddenly find that there's a, a, an order to get a refrigerator for the fire station. Everyone thought it was, you know, let's put it on the consent agenda. One of those issues once took us two months and a lot of fighting to go for uh, before we had even had a consent agenda. So it, it, you can't necessarily see that all the time. But that said, I mean, I think then if someone wants to challenge it, if if the council decides on the consent agenda before it goes to finance, then if someone takes issue with it, we'll hear about it. And in which case we can withdraw from the consent agenda for the final vote and have the discussion. So yeah, I, uh, it's fine with me as a friendly amendment then um, that it is. it would be up to the council to make the, uh, the referrals of the items they feel would germane to have the finance committee meet. And I'll just add, I think having full council do that lessens the um, likelihood that we'll, uh, you know, gloss over something that's sub significant to some part of the community that needs to be for unpacking. It doesn't eliminate it, but I think um, full, that's, a, that's another thing I think full council would bring to that, to that decision. So we have a motion on the floor, is that correct? And a second. And, <laughs> and we all understand the motion in a second. <laughs> Um, you know, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, let me be let me be sure I'm clear here. So, the Finance Committee stays, um, and I actually don't know what rule change was. What rule change is actually 
recommended here other than I guess maybe it's a I guess it's maybe a new rule um, requiring a referral to the finance committee. Am I understanding that right? That's that's what I hear. That it's it's, it's requiring the finance committee to convene um, if if uh, referrals are sent to that committee. Right. Yeah. It's it's requ it's requiring a referral. Right. As, as, as opposed to the pro forma right now. Okay. Yeah. So I, I'm trying to understand where what what rule gets you know tweaked by this. It sounds like that's what it is. It'll be on the question of finance committee jurisdiction, which right now doesn't require referral, but right. uh, looks like this would add a referral step to matters under finance committee jurisdiction. Is that everybody's understanding? And, and just to be clear, as I said, the stipulation before we vote on this is, is it depends completely on whether we vote to eliminate two readings. So. And Council Dwight, I have a question for you. I mean, I'm happy to um, ask the mayor to join us in a future meeting. Are you, how are you feeling about your concern about timing? Um, I I, it's still, I mean, it, I think it's relevant for us to know, period. Okay. Um, so I first will... of all, I mean, I mean, I've heard doubt expressed, and I, I, I think it's good for the council to know what are the limitations, what are, the, where's the room, and how better can we make this work? And anything that you know, the sooner, in if we could have a month previous, that'd be even better. But we'll see, and. Uh, but on a lot of budgetary items, they're prescribed by charter. There's also the Department of Revenue issues calendars. They're also prescribed by law, state law. I don't. I know what the charter restrictions are. I do not know what state law or DOR law is. And then you have the issues of, of, of bidding seasons and bidding calendars as well, which because a lot of this is allocating funds for contracts, for uh, paving, for uh, any number of things, it, or even researches. I mean, well, actually, anything that's germane to um, a survey or, or study, we dictate that calendar with financial orders on it. So, but I would like to know. I, I don't know. Clearly, I have my theories, but and every clearly other people have theories, and I think it's worth it, it's it's worthwhile conversation for us to have. Well, I will um, I will invite the mayor to a, to a future meeting, the select committee. Um, Vice Chair Simon. Yeah, in terms of timing, it sounds like under what's being suggested that that the shortest time frame is two council meetings, right? The first one and then the next one. So the first one. A decision to put stuff on a consent agenda that goes to the next meeting. Uh, on something other than that, um, it's introduced. Finance is expected to meet in between, and then it it'll, it can come back for the following council meeting. Although you could choose to have it take longer, but the the shortest time frame is two council meetings. Is that right? Yes, that's my understanding. If if I may. That's what speaks to the elegance of, of Council Foster's proposal. It's in, in fact, essentially what we do now. It's just we call it something different, and it eliminates, it creates a sense of urgency, and it also, uh, uh, the way we have it now, and to conduct the vote in the same meeting that it's introduced. That's the first vote, and a lot of people just think of that's a fait accompli. So the public's not going to participate. They're just going to say the council just voted for this. The point in fact, we need a second vote, but that's as confusing as hell to anybody else. They don't know that that's actually something. This provides clarity and um, accessibility and transparency. It's it's the full ball of wax. Honestly, I think it's the best thing we do if we come out of this. Any other comments? Okay, I think roll call then. Laura. You're muted. Or you're muted. Councillor Mayori. Yes. Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Councillor Foster, for your insights. Uh, let's see, I'm looking at our four. Uh, so we have we kind of we covered the, the, the third
third bullet point, but we uh, need to cover eliminating community resources or combining city services uh, and community resources. Um, and I believe, yeah, okay. So that's where we're at. Uh, opening the, the discussion on those items. Oh, Councillor, uh, Councillor Dwight. Um, you know, this is this actually came out of the discussion about the generic value of committees or whether the committees should be renamed or every assignments right. and things like that. And in it also what I found as the guiding light in principle, as Councillor, uh, as, as Vice Chair Simon has said, is that these are the business meetings of the council that where the council is supposed to delve into issues that are referred to it to provide more information back to the general council for the debate and to have a more a more full and thoughtful conversation and prepare us for our deliberation. Um, I think what you heard Councilor Nash mentioned that he wants to expand that a little more to essentially com community fora. Um, my point is that those community fora uh, you know, forums and meetings, actually that's within the jurisdiction of the council to convene now without actually having a committee to do that. Um, but the fact remains that if, if for instance, when um, several years ago, um, Council Carney and I introduced um, a, a proposition called uh, uh, Shared Streets, which oddly enough has lots of echoes today. And that's who owns the streets and who's the boss, right? And we created essentially an ad hoc committee for deeper review. It met with a lot of resistance as you can expect and probably would meet with less resistance now if it were to be revisited, but um, that there was, a, there was a discussion, community discussion that went for better part of a year uh, that allowed for lots of community input. Um, uh, and the idea was it was in preparation of crafting an ordinance um, that failed, just not for nothing, but much to my disappointment. And may not, as I said, may not fail again, if it, hopefully. But the, uh, that was in the council purview and the council, the, it's in part of our toolbox. It's there. Uh, my, uh, the one thing that I've spoken out about in the last meeting was meetings for meetings sake, it, meetings for meetings sake. Um, part of, one of the difficult things that I, as I told you when I was council president was, it was like trying to do seat assignments at a Thanksgiving dinner, <laughs> trying to apportion committee membership in such a way because people applied certain uh, status to being on a certain committees and, and then insult uh, by being attached to another one. And that was completely antithetical to the whole process, but it turned into this, who's mommy or daddy like best. And that and it really, or a resume builder say, I'm on the committee of finance, I'm on legislative matters and I have a stash and a separate. I think I, I really wanna move away from that whole concept. I want us to recognize the purpose of committees and the value that they bring for the council to be more effective and more efficient. And uh, I think I absolutely agree they should only convene when items are referred to them. And then should other items be identified that's relative to, now what Councilor Nash mentioned, there were some things, some of the discussions they have to provide the community an opportunity to understand what the city's uh, um, uh, uh, services are available for council uh, members of the community. Well, that actually can also come under the executive the con or the council can create an ad hoc committee, but there was nothing referred. There was no item that we could actually vote on. There was nothing we couldn't, we can't create services. We can't even fund services if, they, if they're not presented by the executive. So, and so as such, it's true, it provides a venue, but the fact is, is there other ways to apply that and that doesn't actually, um, as I said, my concern was create a, a, a sense of expectation that's not necessarily ours to give. So, that, but essentially everything else, 
all the committees, they could either be combined. They could, I mean, as I said, ultimately, these are the committees you guys will be working with. This is so I, it's just that I would ask you to consider what's going to make you the best possible counsel and most effective and most efficient and most transparent and accessible and what will allow you to do your work best. And, and you know, Al talked about this, the culture uh, should not necessarily dictate, you know, the, the government culture should not dictate what those, what those committees will be. My, and then my addendum is the only committee I, I really have concern with is not even a city council committee. And maybe that's the discussion. That's another discussion I have with the mayor or, or maybe you guys would have it after with the next mayor is about where the hell does the youth commission fit? Um, uh, the youth commission actually, as we know, is a dynamic, vibrant uh, committee, but it breaks all the other committee rules that we have, including a mayoral committee. And uh, at, and by the way, they also have one of the largest budgets of any committee. They managed to do lots of fundraising. They're sitting on a pot of money. And it, it, so, but they, they're called the mayor's advisory committee, but they're not. I mean, the, they speak with us more than they do the mayor. And they've been involved lately, uh, well, for quite a while in crafting or participating or co-sponsoring the legislation. Um, that says to me that uh, it's a dimension of um, the city council. But that's one discussion I would like to have is what is that committee? What can it be? What's holding it back and what should hold it back? If, if there is something, uh, there's some other issues of accountability that need to be addressed. But I, I, I just for the purposes of the discussion, because I don't think we can even make a recommendation at this point, but I do think with the next mayor and the next council that it's something uh, that we should capitalize on a really great committee, but it is problematic in so many in its structure and so many other ways. So, um, so I, do I do plan to put that on uh, one of our agendas, but th that's great background. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like someone had their hand up. Um, oh, member Baskin. This is not the super fully formed thought yet. Um, but I think that I agree, I think, with a lot of what Councillor Dwight was just saying, in that the I don't think the com committees should just be meeting to meet. And I think that like I guess what I'm curious about is the process of like, so new business is on the agenda. It's like 17th as Vice Chair Simon has pointed out. I feel like I've almost never seen new business be used on the agenda as it currently stands. And it, the, I'm, I guess I'm curious, like what is the process to get something referred to the, the committees? Like the council needs to refer it, but what, what goes into that? Like, and, and particularly around like, sort of these community issues that aren't directly tied to legislation, how do they wind up in the committees if they're supposed to? Are they supposed to get there? Do we want the committees to be engaging? Like when a lot of people show up to public comment to talk about cherry trees or dog kennels or whatever else is, is of concern, currently those issues don't go anywhere in the council because they're not tied to legislation unless they happen to be tied to a financial order, however obliquely they are tied to that financial order. Um, so I guess I'm curious, like, does the council want to be concerning itself with those discussions that members of the public are bringing to council? If so, should those be referred to a committee? And, or is the council really trying to hone its purpose to the legislative, which is what it's, I think, supposed to do. And in that case, sort of make a clearer expectation about what can the council can and can't do so that members of the public maybe stop thinking the council is the place to bring certain issues that aren't legislative. I don't know. Thank you. Uh, so I think Councilor Dwight and then uh, Vice Chair Simon. No. no. I, I, will, I will go after Vice Chair Simon. I, I didn't okay. have my hand up, but I was planning on putting it up. So I, I would- oh, I guess you have a I'll, permanent I'll, hand I'll, happening. On yes, my you got a yellow hand in the corner up there. You're giving us a high five. <laughs> That's okay. Am I, am I, am I, wow. How did I do that? I'm I know. Sorry. I've, done, I, I've done that too. That happens. Uh, yeah. 
um, mem member basket. No, I'm sorry, vice chair son. Yeah, thank you. So um, I'm going to I'm going to again make the suggestion that there's a lot more leeway for council for the council to operate under the current set of rules and is currently being used. So member Baskin, let's talk about people come in front of the council and they want to talk about the cherry trees. My reading of the rules is there's no referral to a committee that's required to get a committee to meet and talk about it. That based on the jurisdiction that's written into the rules right now, for example, the committee on community resources, which deals with matters affecting economic development, local business, tourism, environment, arts, planning, zoning, sustainability, land use, housing, affordability, among others, it says, there's no reason the chair of that committee can't hold a meeting and talk about that topic with the members of the community. There's no reason why it can't happen. Now, it may just be that the culture has been, that's not the way we do it, but there's nothing to stop a subcommittee from setting up a meeting to address something that people came to talk to the full council about uh, without the council having to take any action to, to require that. And, and maybe all that's necessary is the reinforcing the idea that there's a lot more opportunity for subcommittees to, to do some things than have been, um, than has been done in the past. Because I just think they, the, the current setup can, can accommodate that. Uh, Councillor Dwight. So historically, what as we've noted that uh, back on the old charter, essentially the mayor and the council all convened together, the mayor presided, the mayor set the agenda. Um, and as such, the face of government was all seated in one space at one table and the public wanted, if they wanted to bring their issues or speak truth to power as it were, that was what they would do. They would go, um, and they would speak in public comment. They were never part of the deliberation. Um, part of the frustration comes from actually this is the result of the new charter separating out and taking the mayor out of uh, council meetings in, in any way. The mayor can attend, it's not required, and will attend if requested. But, um, but as such, there's been the historical uh, there's only one place you can go, one public venue that you can go and yell, sometime performatively or whatever. You can, you can in, in, list your, that's why, you know, the uh, uh, public comment is always left to, you can speak on any topic. It's however, if it's not on our agenda, we're not allowed to discuss it and it wouldn't, wouldn't come up in discussion. Um, to Al's point, and this is what I think Councilor Nash is saying as well, is that there's an opportunity for Counselors to interface with their constituents or the, the constituents in the main about issues that they can't do anything about. Uh, the cherry trees is something that we really, really couldn't do anything about, whether we wanted to or not. And uh, but what we're talking about is providing an opportunity to vent or describe or discuss or amplify whatever disagreements that might have existed. But the fact is, at the end of the day, the, the results are the council couldn't, well, you know, you couldn't make a specific ordinance, for instance, that would ban the uh, cutting of cherry trees on Warfield Place. That's, that's, that level of specificity in law is not appropriate. So um, short of threatening to defund the DPW, if you felt the cherry trees were, were indeed slaughtered monks, then I suppose that's something you could do. But my point is, what the frustration that I'm hearing is an, op, uh, an absence of an opportunity for an interface in uh, larger community debates and discussions. And it's something you see that happens, for instance, in town meeting structures, where uh, the community come and you debate items on the floor and you debate with your neighbors and, um, and then make a law or a rule if there was one that's allowed under the. It's, but my concern is that if you create essentially committees, have committees convened to be a complaint bureau, I don't think that's effective governance. I think that what that's doing is acting in place of 
uh, community liaising. If you um, if you feel it's important to go talk with your constituents about these things, and then it's incumbent upon that counselor. Um, or it's also, you can convene a meeting uh, to discuss issues of concerns, barking dogs, uh, parking, uh, speed bumps, and things like that. We do have committees for that, but uh, in the main, for the council, it's just my recommendation, and I, as I said, I don't have to live by this, um, if you want to create a committee, a catch-all committee that actually allows people to have uh, a, a more demonstrative conversation than on issues that we really don't have any oversight on, that's entirely up to you. But I don't, I for one, don't think that's the best way to function uh, for, uh, with committees. And Member Basket. Maybe I'm naive, but I think that's there's some pessimism in that view to me that like there isn't like, yes, there might not be a specific legislative solution to an issue like the cherry trees in Warfield Place. But I think that there's maybe a general chance to think about how legislation might be used or deployed to like continue to improve the way our government functions. And I also think that like. I don't know that it would be a complaint, a complaint bureau to give space for the public to talk in dialogue about issues that are concerning them. Because right now, all that dialogue, I feel like is not like, this is, I'm sorry, this is maybe an annoying point. There's not a lot of good space for public dialogue. Like in, in council, the public can come and comment and it's so frustrating. Like it's such a frustrating process to come and give your comment and then there's no opportunity to respond to the other people in the public. There's no opportunity to dialogue with the council unless you like go speak to your individual counselor individually, which is a different thing. Or like, I think it leads to toxic internet discourse. I think it leads to people dialoguing in these forums where they're not engaging with each other face to face. And again, like, I, I don't know how much this wants to be the council's purview, but I agree with Vice Chair Simon that it, it doesn't, nothing is saying it can't be the council's purview. So I think if the council wants to try to, like, build some more spaces for public dialogue and discourse in Northampton about issues that people clearly want to talk about because they keep coming to council trying to talk about them and then not being able to have a dialogue, I feel like that would be productive like that to me would improve the spirit of public discourse in Northampton. And so I would be excited about that as something that the council could do. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking um, Solicitor Seawald is being tasked with looking at that Amherst model we talked about last time. And maybe, you know, maybe an agenda item we could consider is it is how to build more space for public discourse in a, a larger sense. And I just want to chime in, uh, you know, because I brought up the community resources city service uh, thing last time. And, you know, it, it, again, it's tricky with the contingent because I think really defining what their role is, you know, obviously sways me to whether I think they should exist or not. And I, I do think between eliminating and not is this idea that I'm hearing, um, support for of you know only meeting when there's items to meet about which um, to me is, is a great place to start in, you know in terms of using council's council's time and I thought a lot about what Councillor Dwight said a couple meetings ago or maybe it was last meeting um, you know like if I'm on city services I, I find it it's interesting we had you know we'll, we'll have um, someone come and speak um, like a housing uh, authority board member and such and, and other um, but if the goal is to bring that back to larger council I mean that's an interesting thought you know well maybe it prompts me to do something that I some sort of legislation that I do bring back to full council I don't really have an answer but I'm, I'm trying to keep that what Councilor Dwight said in mind because of course it's interesting I, I learn a lot of, um, and it probably helps me as a an individual counselor, but is that city service, you know, is that functioning the way uh, Councilor White, you know, kind of said it's supposed to, that it, that, that these subcommittees bring that back. So just putting it out there. 
Um, yeah, Councillor White. Uh, to that point, actually, um, it's an excellent point because, and I have to be careful here because I can't actually talk about pending legislation or anything else that we might be deliberating. Sure. But um, if a proposal were um, to come from a counselor uh, for an ordinance uh, relative to, I can't say, because it actually there are potential ones that are looming now and I don't want to just, you know, disqualify any. That actually prompts, uh, uh, when you have an act of council that's actually drafting law, um, by and large, you know, when we draft things so far, mostly we've been drafting resolutions, right? Which actually has no binding effect in law, but it also does what Ezekiel was talking about, prompt an opportunity for a community discussion. Now, those of you who've gone door to door have heard from a number of constituents who tell you the council has no business getting involved in whether we get involved in Iraq or not. Who cares what the council thinks on their thoughts on abortion or whatever? And, um, but that is actually one mechanism there for more fulvent conversations. And, 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 but even more critical is presenting the council with law co-sponsored law with an, or sponsored or not sponsored. Um, and I use the plastic bag or uh, ban as a perfect example. Once that was introduced, the community uh, conversation started to become engaged and more expansive. Uh, not from lack of the youth commission trying to do outreach all over the place. It just never got purchased. They got easily dismissed until, oh my God, there's about to be a law about this. Now to the issue of, of New business, new business is basically a tag on. It's a it's a catch all that allows for if something, for instance, in the course of the debate comes up and that's not on the agenda for or the future agenda, we place it in new business to bring up that, that will be would compels it to be on the next following agenda. It's the purpose of it to debate and discuss something as new business. Which, by the way, the old council way old council used to do, they just, it was new business and then they would just throw whatever the hell they wanted on and debate it on the floor at that time, which is violation of open meeting law out the wazoo. That's not, uh, but that's the purpose of, and again, that's kind of an artifact, but it does have value and you're right. We don't employ it very much at all. I, I have memory of twice. Um, so, I, I mean, we do, you know, this is to Al's point, we actually, within our rules, have a fair amount of latitude as far as uh, introducing conversations and discussing and more public input without actually crafting law. Although, uh, you know, I think for the most part, one of the things we used to do uh, more frequently and we do less so now is either creating law and just as importantly, eliminating laws, getting rid of laws that are uh, bias, unfair, that were established in a time that they do no longer apply. And there's, there's value in that because it, that also has, that also speaks to uh, a dynamic council that is working to uh, do actually the other really important thing that we do besides fiduciary oversight, which is legislating, crafting law or, and that, as I said, includes getting rid of laws like loitering laws, which were unconstitutional, or there's sign laws that currently are on the books that the Supreme Court's already rendered decisions saying it's unconstitutional that we still have as a law on the book that that would be worth looking into to get rid of. Talking about laws about creating things like food trucks and stuff like that, any, any of that stuff. And we that is a dynamism that um, I, I'd like to see reclaimed. Uh, member Baskin. Others should go first. I'll go last after Member Simon and Councillor Foster. Um, Councillor Foster, I didn't see your hand. Yeah. Although Member Simon had his hand up, so I, I oh, would have yeah. to defer it to him. It's a yes. little jagged, my yeah. delay, so I'm not seeing people's hands. Um, Vice Karen. Chair Simon. No. All right, thanks. I was just going to say, Karen. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I want I want to come back to the issue of the subcommittees because we're still we're still in that section here and yeah. I want to come back to the example of the of the cherry trees and how 
a subcommittee, I think, can uh, behave in a way that addresses some of the things that I've heard discussed tonight. And and I would I would also suggest that does, there doesn't need to be a legislative outcome for a committee to act on something. And um, one of the weak spots, in my opinion, that I've seen in the in the in the short time I've been in the city is I don't think the city council conducts enough oversight or accountability of the executive. And so this is going to be an example where I think that can come into play. So let's just say people come in front of the city council, they say, oh, we're in this terrible mess. We don't like what's going on. Subcommittee meets where they now look into the matter. They will ask the public works folks to come in and say, please explain to us, how do you make decisions? Why did you make this decision? Um, did you have conversation? What was the result? Um, would you consider alterations to your plans? All these questions that would be in a public setting or involved people to, to hear and to participate in. And that, of course, serves the purpose of being an official meeting that's asking questions of the executive branch about why is this happening and why do you do things? What's your normal course of decision and so on? It also has the benefit of being in a, a, a singular occurrence where the, the affected citizens and that uh, portion of city government um, is having uh, discussion involvement on the topic where, where hopefully things can get to a conclusion. Sometimes that's not gonna be possible, right? That sometimes things don't work out, but it provides an opportunity in an official setting by the, the city council asking questions about why the executive is operating in a certain way. And I think the city council has that right and responsibility to do that. That's what I understand is the committee's having a certain purview to, to look at particular topics. So I think this could be a, a very good example of how, how this could have been handled a little bit differently. I don't know that the outcome would have changed, but potentially you can see that the citizens then see the city council as being the one who investigates further for them, tries to get answers, acts or doesn't act depending on authority, but that should become you know, part of the discussion too about what is possible. Uh, and I think that that potentially gives you a different sort of outcome than maybe the one that happened. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm being aware of time. We, I wanted to put uh, the, the other agenda, the next agenda I'm on here so we could discuss it. I don't want, I think this is a fruitful conversation, but I just want to um, just make everyone aware, you know, it's, we have a half hour, um, not a hard stop, but just, just to keep that in our mind, in our mind moving forward. And I'm happy to move items that we aren't able to get to, to a further agenda. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes, Councillor Foster. Thank you. I'll, I'll be mindful of time. And, and um, Member or Vice Chair Simon um, sort of said what I was thinking um, probably more emphatically and eloquently than, than I would have said it. So, so thank you for that. And, and I think as a member of both the city services and community resources committees, I feel fairly protective of them. And I, I think um, combination two of being a brand new counselor um, plus COVID has really kind of upended the work of some of the committees in this term. Um, but I do see that potential, um, you know, as we were talking about the city services, there, there, there can be a stronger oversight component to what we do, although there is some. When we met with um, the Northampton Housing Authority at, at City Services, that was in response to hearing from people who wanted to know more, and we needed to know more. And so, you know, is that the perfect outcome? I'm not sure, but I think City Services is a great place for that to be. Um, and, and um, you know, in similar with community resources, um, as Councillor Nash had brought up earlier in public comment, when we had the larger meeting with a variety of organizations working to address um, people with food insecurity and, and um, experiencing homelessness, um, that was also in response to community and constituent questions and calls for what are you as a city doing? Um, and so was the city council actually doing anything in that moment? Maybe not, but we were providing a platform for counselors to understand, which we needed to do to communicate effectively with constituents. 
as well as for social service agencies, um, you know, and people to sort of connect around what is available in Northampton. And there was value in that. And I, and I would say both committees, um, as it is now, don't necessarily meet unless there is work to do. Um, and so city services often has appointments. So we're often meeting, there have been five minute meetings and then there have been two hour meetings based on, on other things that come up. Um, and, and I think that is a committee that could be, um, you know, that has potential that's untapped right now. Um, but I do think both of those committees um, have value, um, but not necessarily with a monthly meeting uh, unless there is work to actually be done. Uh, Member Baskin. Yeah, I agree with pretty much everything that Vice Chair Simon and Councillor Foster just said. I think there's there's a lot of, I mean, the charge of city services matters relating to the activities and operation of municipal government is oversight. Like the oversight of the municipal government is in that. And so I do think that it would have been appropriate to you know, send something like the, the issue with the cherry trees to city services. Like, I think that, that that makes a lot of sense to me. And so I, I am interested, I agree. I think both of the committees have, have purpose. Um, I'd like to see them used more. And I, I don't know, again, this gets into what's rules and what's culture, but I, I feel like there's a culture of the council feeling disempowered um, or like things are not their purview. They're not supposed to do things. I, I would love to see the council shifting towards things feeling possible and like exploration and discussion and dialogue at least feeling possible rather than like things being perennially shut down by sort of feeling like things are going to be done wrong or you know I don't know I don't I can't quite put a finger on what is the thing that is shutting things down but I feel like there's this sense and sometimes it's the city solicitor I think um saying that things need to be a certain way when it's in one interpretation. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I think it's it's from a lot of places, but I just, I would like to see the council trying to explore what it can do and explore its potential more, um, even if there's, and also I think to the point about resolutions, like I'm, I think I hear that people are sometimes frustrated when the council resolves about things that are so far beyond its purview. But that also brings up the question of like, there is nothing stopping the council from making resolutions about the actions of the municipal government. Like there's nothing that says the council couldn't make a resolution about, you know, something like a specific action around something like the cherry trees, even if it's not in the council's purview to, to block or, you know, I just think there's a lot between not talking about it and defunding the DPW that is within the council's purview. And I, I would love to see the council acting on that more. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, I'll just add that I've been struggling with, you know, um, when, um, when dealing with my constituents and meeting with them, uh, this, I'm thinking of Meadow Street where they're doing some paving, you know, understanding the protocol there in terms of what, um, so I think one of the roles is even, even if it's just education of the counselors to, man, to manage expectations and, and understand the protocol or know, you know, what steps you know, what happens at what steps. I, I do, I guess what I'm saying is I do agree that there's other outcomes that are positive that are not just, you know, legislation. Yeah, so. Any other comments? Vice Chair Simon. So just a question regarding yeah. the, the discussion topic, which is yeah. um, what to do about community source, uh, resources and or city services. It sounds like we're at the point where we would just leave the committees as they are. Is that, am I right about that? Uh, I will speak personally that, that for me, the idea of meeting only when necessary and, and spending more time defining and, and imagining um, how to be effective subcommittees is, is enough for me to, to kind of drop the idea of having to eliminate or, or change their structure. So maybe it's not exactly maintaining status quo, but um, yes, that's that was that's my per, that's my personal view as a, as a counselor. Any other um, thoughts before we move on to modifying Rule Four Point Five Order of Business? Okay, so our next agenda item. I'm wondering 
Council Freud, do you think I sh I should be reading this aloud? You know, when something's linked. Uh, no, well, <laughs> say no. unless it's a, unless it's <laughs> unless it's a desire to. I mean, the fact is, we, this is one of the things we were discussing. Should yes, we that's and, why. I think and, <laughs> and and I, it, it, given the fact that the that all the deliberators know, okay. uh, probably I would presume already have an idea how they would rather see the order structured. I don't think it's necessary. To read Thank it, you. No. I, if I had perhaps practiced beatboxing it or it was more entertaining, I would I would insist. But so yes, looking at the order of business, comments on this agenda item. Question. So far, the, the order of business is, is more or less perfunctory. Um, if, if, as we know, at any point in the meeting, the, the, the order needs to be changed or there's something that requires the order to change, then so it goes. And I, I don't know, this, this doesn't rank up there with one of my more critical concerns about the rules and regulations. But if, if there is something, and I've heard people mention it and discuss it before, so uh, I'm amenable to any and all changes to this or none, because it's, it, as I said, it, it's a flexible document. It's just some, it's simply an outline that was supposed to um, allow uh, the process to proceed. And I, I, the rhyme or reason to it, uh, Councillor uh, Ryan O'Donnell had constructed this, and I know he gave it great deep thought, but uh, I couldn't I couldn't tell you what that was. Oh, um, Councillor Foster. I did see, I, I don't mean to keep doing this, but I, I think your internet lag. I saw Laura. Laura, did you want to pipe oh, in? I, with yep. Yeah. Is, thank you, Laura. I just wanted to say that during the 2018 council session, Councillor Dwight had asked me to move up updates from council president and committee chairs on the agenda, up on the agenda to before recognitions and one minute announcements. And so ever since that's where it's been, but this was never like codified in the rules. So if you guys want it to remain, perhaps that should be moved up. Oh. Did you guys understand what I said? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, it's effectively been up right. there. It just was never changed. In the I, will just, I will just chime in and say that I like that order because it kind of follows announcements when it's kind of the announcement period. <laughs> So that's my personal opinion. Is there, yeah. Anyone want to ask, uh, um, Councillor Foster? I guess not Not to that point specifically, okay. although the, the order on that works for me. Um, the part that, that I've been wondering, and maybe this changes as we look at how we do finances and financial orders differently moving forward. Again, I guess it's all contingent. Um, but the part that, that I've been wondering with our agendas is, how we could maybe make better use of the department's heads times when they come to meetings. Um, so that had me wondering, and I know sometimes there's a, a juggling act of members of the public being at the meetings and wanting to make sure that, that they're able to see the agenda item that we're deliberating on um, as well as, as department heads. And the financial orders very often um, you know, include department heads needing to explain them. Um, but it had me wondering if resolutions may wanna move further down the agenda so that city department heads, um, the, the agenda items that they would be directly involved with if we wanted to address those first. Um, and I'm, I'm open, this isn't a hill that I'm like prepared to lay down on, but um, I just wonder if we could use their time better. Uh, Vice Chair. Oh, uh, um, Member Baskin and then Vice Chair Simon. It's sure Simon was up first. Oh. Thanks. Um, so just a reminder, we've already uh, recommended removing the Committee on Finance from the agenda. Uh, I was interested in this topic specifically because of how far down new business goes. And I guess I need to ask a question of the existing counselors because my expectation, which may be different than the way it is, is for example, when you needed to have a vote on the budget, I would have expected that to be under new business. And it sounds like maybe it, it could have been put someplace different than that. Um, can somebody answer? The, the budget was, uh, you're, you're talking the vote subsequent to the hearings and the discussions, yeah. right? Uh, that came under finance. 
Uh, it came under finance, and then from there, it was that's where the more expansive conversation was held. And then after uh, joining finance, and we voted right. on the, the final budget. I mean, so, yeah, and I mean, it, 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 it's particularly complicated this year because we have to do for uh, no knock against Council Jarrett, but we had to do some rather uh, <laughs> elaborate readjustments in order to allow for his his existing conflict. But by and large, that's pretty much the the way it is played out. There's, I, I don't think there's any pressing reason that it has to do that. Well, the, yeah, the, what I'm what I'm getting to is I think I'm, my impression may be mistaken about how much actually goes under the new business title. And it, as I as I've been hearing, I'm I'm wondering if most of the stuff that gets acted on ends up getting put under one of the the, the prior titles, and that new business by itself uh, doesn't really have very much. It is that correct? That, that's my understanding, Al. That, that is my understanding, that, that the new business is, as I said, essentially a, resid, you know, a, a, a residual tail. It, it sits there and it allows for an opportunity that if anything during the course of the discussion debate that hadn't been anticipated but needed further discussion would be put in new business, which would assure its appearance in the next agenda. And that's, what, that's why it exists. It's actually... It's silly because sometimes we've done that and recommended that when we're discussing an item and it never gets new business, we had already made the decision that it should go on the next yeah. agenda. So. All right. So I guess I'll just wrap up by saying I think my concerns about where new business is isn't as relevant as I thought it was. So. Right. right. Uh, but I would I would like an example of a when you would use new business. But let me let member Baskin go unless I got my timing off again. I think you're good this time. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, the seems like new business is not operational in the way it's currently structured. Also, it seems like the way things usually get on the agenda is somebody sends them to the council president and the council president chooses whether or not to put them on the agenda. So that, I'm not sure new business even needs to be there as its own category, given how the, the council is currently operating. I would love to see public hearings before public comment. I do think that's another way of being respectful for people's time. I also don't think the public hearings need to be in the convened meeting based on how the, the section in the appendix on public hearings works. I actually think they probably shouldn't be in the, the convened meeting. Um, so I would change the order to be public hearing, public comment, then roll call. Um, that would be my preference on that. I agree with Councillor Foster on moving resolutions. Um, to after orders and ordinances and financial orders. I think that makes a lot of sense. And if there's a particularly exciting resolution with a lot of public interest, the council president could always move that up. Um, so that seems like that would be practical. I am a little curious why we need updates from council president and committee chairs, recognitions and one minute announcements by councilors, communications and proclamations from the mayor. It essentially feels to me like that is an announcement section as Councilor Mayori just said, so could it not be on the agenda as announcements and updates from the council and the mayor and just have one agenda section rather than like needing to move through three sections that feel to me like the distinctions aren't super meaningful, just in terms of like trying to think about how to make this agenda more accessible to the public. I also would kind of love if the agenda featured a definition for orders, ordinances, resolutions and financial orders. Um, just like in a little appendix on each agenda so that members of the public could understand the distinction between those things because it took me a while personally to, to understand the difference between an order and an ordinance. Um, and I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Um, Councilor Dwight. Uh, good point on the last point. The uh, issue of the one thing about new business is to, it's a mechanism that um, it's never, it doesn't have to be employed, but it's there should it need to be employed. For instance, if you have a recalcitrant council president and there's a deeply divided council and uh, it, makes, it makes it required if it's put into new business, if it's introduced as new business, it's required to be put on the next agenda as opposed to discretionary. And so um, the reason you haven't seen that employed is, you know, uh, all past council presidents have been quite accommodating and tried to and base the agenda in the best way to function without being way too clever and 
basically suppressing something by not allowing it to be appear on the agenda. But that's just you don't you don't make rules for the people who are there. You make the rules for the people who could be there. And um, the uh, what was the other item, Ezekiel? I forgot. You uh, oh, oh, oh relative public the order hearings. about the announcement, the public hearings and the announcement order. I think I agree with that. The issue about the announcements again that's that is something that's sort of a another vestigial tale. Um, the distinction between uh, chair announcements and general announcements, the reason that came about was that there were councils who's just basically uh, back in the day without this meeting would sort of it, uh, this, make these announcements and they're not listed on the agenda. It's a via, it was a violation of the agenda um, that, you know, they wanted to tell about an event in their in their ward or talk about uh, meetings or so on and so forth. But the fact it wasn't covered by an agenda item and that actually made a problem. The committee chairs, of course, the report from committee chairs, you've seen it used basically to announce when the meeting would be convening, what, were, what will be addressed or, you know, what was in some cases, for instance, to report back on what has occurred in meetings that people hadn't attended. Um, but I agree, I don't think you need to make the decision. And the same thing in the mayoral uh, announcements and proclamations, the mayor will, and the council, by the way, can also do proclamations. They, maybe many folks don't know that, but we can create proclamations as well. Um, that, uh, yeah, that just just to let you know that if you guys want to take advantage of that next year, that you can, yeah, or even with the time remaining, you can actually craft some proclamations. So I, I and I all, but I more, the more salient point, of course, is um, having the hearings before the meeting convened. I think is right and appropriate because you call the roll in hearings, which is it may seem a little silly to someone right now. What we do is we call the roll of the council. Everyone announces they were there, and then you convene a hearing, and you have to do the roll again. Then no one's left the room. Everything's still the same. Laura's just repeating the same list. But that's not the reason. I, I think the reason makes perfect sense. It actually assures a closer adherence to the scheduled time for those things. Uh, it also, this is to Councilor Foster's point, it, uh, it gives uh, department heads a better sense of when they should show up, when would be an appropriate time for them to show up. Um, yeah, all these recommendations I think are good. And whatever makes the document cleaner and more accessible, including definitions of orders, ordinances, and uh, uh, anything, actually anything, any item on this might come with a, a certain subheading explaining what it is, is, is an excellent idea. Not only just for the public, for the council as well. Right. I don't want to forget about Laura's um, suggestion of codifying that change. Just to put that out there. Any other discussion, comments? Member Baskin. So just a point of clarification, just because I, I want to make sure I understood what Councillor Dwight said about the new business. So how the new business functions is that any councillor could say during the new business, I want to put blah, blah, blah on the agenda, and then it has to be on the agenda of the next meeting. That's that just interesting because that's such a, that's actually, that's very dynamic. That's, yeah, that's all. Okay, thanks. Um, Vice Chair Simon. So does anyone want to make a motion to suggest the alterations to the order of business that we've discussed? Uh, Member Baskin. I'll take a stab at it. Um, I move that we place public hearings at the beginning of the order of business, um, that we combine recognitions and one minute announcements by councilors, communications and proclamations from the mayor and updates from council president and committee chairs into um, announcements from councilors and the mayor and put it after um, immediately after the roll call um, and that resolutions be placed after ordinances um, and remove, removing the recess for committee on finance although we kind of covered that already. Um, and additionally, that we put a small sort of subheading explaining what each of these categories means on the agenda um, as published. 
so that members of the public and counselors know what each agenda item is. I, I second that, but with, with just a slight amendment in that uh, the motion is to recommend. So that's what we're doing. We're moving Absolutely. to recommend. The movement, motion to recommend all of that. So seconded by uh, Councillor Dwight. Uh, roll call. Uh, Laura, you're muted. Councillor Maori. Yes. Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. And Councillor Foster. Yes. Uh, the motion passes unanimously. I'm very proud of us. It's 751. I'm beaming. <laughs> Let's see. We're getting there. So um can we talk is, for nine more minutes? <laughs> if you'd like to. <laughs> um, let's see. Confirm dates of next meeting. And, you know, oh, yes, Councilor Dwight? I, I, I was going to make a request for the next oh. agenda. Yeah, sure. And that, that can we address the second reading issue, the two reading issue? Because so much seems to spring from that. I would like to have that resolved before we proceed further. Right. My contingency trickiness comment. Yes, I hear you. Thank you for that. I, 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 I agree with you. Um, yeah, so our next meeting that we have scheduled is the 20, Monday, the 20, uh, September 27th at six. I know we're becoming almost like a pop-up rave because we have to keep changing our <laughs> times that we haven't been able to find a regular meeting you know, day, uh, but that one was because of election day. And uh, so that's the next one. Do we want to schedule ahead of that and beyond that? I yeah. just want to remind on the 27th, I probably won't be in attendance. Oh, that. right. That was it. Yeah. I knew there was, yeah. I think we scheduled, but, uh, we scheduled we, the number. We just, well, I, right. Um, I, I, yeah. Um, well, it, it would, <laughs> I don't know what shape I'm going to be in, to be honest. That was it, right. It's all said and done. So, um, which might be fun to watch me really ripped out of my yeah. head talking to you guys. I don't know um, if it's productive. That's right. Now I recall that. Member Baskin. Was there a reason we couldn't do Wednesday the 29th instead of Monday the 27th so you could be there, Councillor Dwight? I, right. We had that discussion. I don't remember. I'm sure we did, and I'm sure there was a no, reason. No, I, I don't I can't remember, remember either. Right though. Now. Yeah, I, I don't recall the Wednesday. Was there a competing meeting, or do you remember? Yeah, I'm trying to look on the calendar. Or could, does anyone uh, does anyone have a um, a Because that would actually be better for me personally. Yeah, and I'd really like to have Councillor Dwight there. Um, yes, the, Vice Chair. Just as an informational thing, this is one of the problems actually with putting all your proposed meetings onto a calendar without actually officially having them scheduled because then when we go to schedule something, everybody thinks they have a meeting, which may or may not even happen. Yeah. Hey, we, we, all of us attended the meeting yesterday. <laughs> we, uh, Ezekiel, Karen and myself showed up at six o'clock yesterday. Oh. And we oh. need to be invited in and then we realized, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. Which, right. Laura, that was so not your fault. You clearly. Oh, yeah. You sent an email about it. That I just did not move it in calendar. my Google Calendar. Uh, <laughs> I did. I did have a moment of panic and then realized it was tonight because I was. Yeah, which what you said, Laura, was see you tomorrow. Was I think what? Right. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, whoa. Okay. So, no big thing. Um, yes, I, I can. I can meet on the 29th. Um, I might be a little late. I have oh. a, a four o'clock meeting that runs a couple hours, but we'll, um, um, yeah, and yeah, I'm, I could do that. Okay, and yes, um, Councilor Foster. I do not see anything on the city calendar at oh, all for that day. About. Yeah, I don't see anything there at all. Right. So, and so yeah. then the decision is, uh, Councilor Dwight, would you like us to consider starting at a? a 6:30. I'm, a, you know, I'm at two minds. I don't want to throw people off, but I get really. Well, like let's do, do let's do six o'clock. I will do whatever I can okay. and endeavor to. Get I understand you if you're late. I think it's. I'm trying to, you know, stick to a time so that uh, uh, members of the public kind of get used to it. But, exactly. But I also. Um, okay, so we have uh, Wednesday, September 
29th at 6 p.m. is our next meeting. And do we want to yeah, go? Then we have meetings well, scheduled, I think, through November. Right after that. It's October 12th. Okay, so I would entertain. I think that's everything on our. Uh, move to adjourn then. Is there a second? I will stay for the roll call this time. Councilor Mayori. Yes. Um, Member Simon. Yes. Member Baskin. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. And Councilor Foster. Yes, and by Councilor Nash. Yes, by Councilor Nash. <laughs>